Joyce. I am back with my review of problems from the midterm 2013. And on this video, I'm going to focus on problems 13 to 17, which are international trade. Let's go to the next slide. Here are the first four questions, 13 to 16. And I'm going to give you, we're going to give you a supply curve. We're going to give you a demand curve. This is for backpacks. We're also going to tell you that the world price of backpacks is $70. So the first question asks, what's the domestic equilibrium price if there is no free trade? So let me run to the next slide here. All right. So now we know we have an equilibrium. We have a demand curve that PD is equal to 100 minus 3QD. And we know that the supply curve is equal to 20 plus 2QS. And we know in equilibrium that the two prices have to equal each other at that point. Therefore, we can equate these equations. And we have 100 minus 3QS equals 20 plus 2QS. All right. And we can bring the minus 3 over here, bring the 20 over there. And we're going to end up algebraically with 80 equals 5Q and therefore q is equal to q is equal to 16. Well, if q is equal to 16, I can plug it back in here. 3 times 16 is 48. 100 from that is 52. So equilibrium price is going to be 52. To check it, I can put it into the supply curve. 2 times 16 is 32, plus 20 is also 52. So now I have my equilibrium price and quantity, and I've answered that question. And we can just label it here now on our little curve. We've got an equilibrium quantity of 16. We have a price price of 52. We know this is the demand curve. This is the supply curve. And now we can go on to the next question. It says, assume this country allows trade at the world price. What will the, there will be what? Well, we know the world price is $70. And we know, therefore, 70 is above equilibrium. So we can just roughly draw it in something like this. OK, let's just put it here. Let's put our 70 there. And now you can see what's going to happen. So we know the quantity supplied by domestic producers is going to be quite good. They're going to want to increase it out to there but consumers are going to cut back from the equilibrium that existed prior to trade and cut back their quantity demanded to something like this and there's some number there all right so now we have to figure that out how do we get that well again we can go back to our supply and demand curves let's go to the supply curve we know that ps is equal to 20 plus 2QS. And now we know that the world price is $70. So we can just plug in 70 equals 20 plus 2QS. And therefore, we can bring the 20 over to here. And that's going to be 50 equals 2QS. Or QS, and I can squeeze it in here, is equal to 25. And that's going to be very helpful. So I'm going to put 25 right there, a little sloppily. But you get the point. That's 25. So now we have to figure out what's quantity demanded. Well, we can do the exact same thing, right? We can do QD is equal to 100 minus 3QD. And now I know the price is $70, which is discouraging to consumers. So we know 70 equals 100 minus 3QD. Again, I'm going to bring the minus 3QD over here. So this becomes a positive 3QD. And bring the 70 over here. So this becomes simply 30. And now we know that QD is equal to 10 if we solve for that. And now we know quantity demanded by consumers will be 10 after trade is opened in this country. And here we have our answer. This is clearly exports, right? And the exports are equal to 25 minus 10 or exports are equal to 15 units. And so there you have your answer to number 14. It's C. They will export 15 units. All right. So now they ask the increase in total surplus as a result of trade. That's problem 15. Well, the surplus we know has to be this area right in here. All right. That's the surplus that's going to accrue to suppliers. But nevertheless, it's total surplus to society. And we have to figure out what that area is. All right. Well, it's a triangle. Right. So we've got our base right here. We've got our altitude right here. And now we can figure out what well, we know the base is going to, what's going to be 1 half times the base, which is going to be 15, 25 minus the 10, times the altitude, which is 70 minus 52, which is going to be, oops, sorry, which is going to be 18. Ah, I can't go back here, I don't think, huh? All right, which is going to be 18. So let me quickly draw this in here because I lost my my area a little bit, right? So we know that this was 70. We know this was 52. We know this quantity demanded was 10. And this was 25. Just stay with me, and I'm going to get this area, which is equal to 1 half times 18, which is the 70 minus 52 times the 15. So that's 1 half. So that's going to be equal to $135 is the increase in total surplus in this market here. 
all right i had to reach that a little bit because i can't back up with this little mechanism i have going here all right let's go to number 16 all right and 16 says because of the great recession the world price falls to 40 dollars all right so 40 dollars is going to be below here all right but let me go to another graph here right so if we had our equilibrium here at 52 and we had this at 16 now because of the great recession the world price falls to something like this which is forty dollars and now we know that the quantity demand is going to be increased by consumers and we know that the quantity supply is going to be cut back by domestic producers and the question is where do we find those points well, again we go to our supply and demand curve so we know that ps equals 20 plus 2 qs and now we know that the price is only 40 dollars so 40 dollars equals 20 plus 2 qs bring the 20 over there we know 20 equals 2 qs and therefore qs equals 10 all right so that gives us right there uh, units of 10 and now we can go to the demand equation and we know that pd equals 100 minus 3 qd and now i know that the price is 40 dollars so consumers like this 40 equals 100 minus 3 qd so now we know that 60 equals uh equal excuse me equals 3 qd divide both sides by 3 we know that qd is now equal to 20 so we know that consumers are consuming 20 and what has happened well certainly we've had consumers are consuming more they are 20 versus uh, our imports uh, of here of uh, excuse me domestic production of 10 so now we're going to have imports of uh, 10 units and that's right there so this is imports all right and the question is what has happened to consumer surplus well it depends which either way you compare it from if you compare it from equilibrium you know the consumers have gained this if you want to compare it to where we have the previous world price of here and the price fell there again you know consumers were only getting this part right here as consumer surplus when there was a trade and the price was $70. So clearly their surplus has increased because it's this whole area right in here. And I will just, uh, I'll put zeros in here, okay? So all this represents the increase in consumer surplus. But really the answer was pretty straight up and had to be B, the country imports 10 units and consumer surplus has to rise. And that is number 16. Lastly, let me go to 17. Given a world price of $40, the government decides to protect domestic producers by imposing a tariff of $6. So let's go. All right. So we were at 42, and I'll write that in, excuse me, $40. We knew this 52 was the equilibrium price. We knew this was 10, and we knew this was 20. And now what happens is we add a tariff. Okay, so this was world price, but now it's world price plus tariff. It's going to be somewhere right here world price plus tariff all right and now we know that this tariff is going to be six dollars all right so that's six dollars and now we have to figure out again our new equilibrium um quantity demanded and the quantity supplied by domestic producers well you do tariffs in order to protect your pedestrian your domestic producers because they're going to increase their quantity supplied consumers are going to cut back their quantity demanded which is going to constrain imports or reduce imports your job is to figure out how much again we go back to our supply and demand curve and here's what we do so let's go to demand so we know that pd equals 300 minus excuse me 100 minus 3 qd and now we know the price is equal to 40 plus the tariff so it's going to be equal to 46 so 46 is equal to 100 minus 3 qd we bring the 100 over or 3d over and you're going to get 3 qd is equal to 100 minus 46 which is 54 divided by 3 so qd equals 18. so now we know consumers have cut back their quantity demanded to 18 units and now we can go to the supply curve because domestic producers are a little happier and that's going to be equal to 20 plus 2 qs and now we know we have a price of 46 is equal to 20 plus 2 qs and therefore 26 equals 2 qs or qs equals 13 and now we know there we go so 13 and now we have our new situation here where imports still importing right that's imports and it's going to be only five units of this backpacks that we're importing here and 
what happens is imports decline by five units and producer surplus rises and that is the answer producer surplus prior to this tariff was right in here the additional consume producer surplus because of the tariff is going to be this additional space right here so we know producer surplus lows and we know imports went from 20 to 10 or 10 dollars 10 units of imports and it fell to 18 minus 13 or 5 units of imports and so again your answer would be imports declined by five and producer surplus rises and that does it all right